moves in my heart, I'm gonna sing till the spirit moves in my heart, I'm gonna sing till the spirit all the plan comes. of salvation. Let's go and get the spirit into this feast in day that we are currently. We have currently came to, and that is again the feast of weeks or the feast of Pentecost. So this is Leviticus. Leviticus 23 and 9, and it is also called the Feast of First Fruits. The Feast of First Fruits. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave. He shall weigh the sheep before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. The priest shall weigh it. Okay, so what they were supposed to do, they were supposed to get this offering, the first fruits of the harvest, and weigh it, and it had to be accepted. Okay? I'm going to read 11 again. I'm going to just read 10 and 11 again. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheep before the Lord, to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Now what is this pointing to? You had to take the first fruits and wave it, and it had to be accepted. This is what they had to do. Let's read some. Let's go to John. Let's quickly go to John, the 20th chapter. John, the 20th chapter, and look at the resurrection of Jesus. Because, brothers and sisters, again, his feast days point to his plan. Jesus, we're going to find out, is that first fruits. That waving of the first fruits that had to be accepted was pointing to Jesus. John, the 20th chapter, in verse 1, it says, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeing the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto him, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. See, they did not understand fully, even though they walked with Jesus for three and a half years, they did not understand fully his plan. All right, so I'm going to just skip down because Simon Peter also ran to the sepulchre, but I'm going to get back to Mary and something that is significant that happened between her and Jesus. This is verse 11. It says, But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. And see of the two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. So again, it has not dawned on her that he has been resurrected. Verse 14 reads, And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. He's resurrected at this time. Verse 15 reads, Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Who are you looking for? She supposing him to be the God that said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, Tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. In verse 16 it reads, Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. So she realized at this point that this is Jesus whom she's talking to. In his new body that can change forms, that can change in degree of glory. That's why even when he appeared to his disciples, the doors being shut, he appeared in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. That's the kind of body he has. A celestial body. We're going to read more about that celestial body. But verse 17, it reads, Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. Because when she saw him, she wanted to, she grabbed him, wanted to cling on to him. He said, Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Now what is this about? He had to be accepted. He had to be accepted. That's what that was representative of. He had to be accepted. Just like that wave offering. Again, he says, I'm going to read this again. 
Jesus saith unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. So although he was resurrected, he had not gone up and been weighed and accepted. He said, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. All right, let's go back to Leviticus. Because he is the first fruits. The word first is indicative of more to come. If you have first, you have more to come. Brothers and sisters, we are the more to come. He is the first fruits. We're going to find this out. But we're going to go back to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15. It says, And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves and two tenth deals. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Okay? So now you are to take these. You are to take these. And you are, this is after. This is after 50 days. And it says these wave loaves of two tip deals, you are going to bake with leaven. Now leaven, when you look at the sacrifices, leaven often represents sin. Why are you offering these bacon with leaven. These are the first fruits. Not the first fruits, period, but the first fruits of the Lord. Because these represent people. These represent people. And we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The only man who was without sin totally was Jesus. Even men, when you look at it, said they were perfect. The Lord said about Job, he was a perfect and an upright man. He told Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. You look at Daniel, you look at Noah, and you look at Job, and you see, the Lord tells you, but these men were upright. They are going to be in the resurrection. However, they have sinned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have leaven, so to speak. But he has made a way for man. Even though we have all come short of the glory of God, he has made a way for us. This is his plan of salvation. We need to observe his plan. Glory, hallelujah, he has a plan for us to bring us out of the bondage of death. Let's go to, uh, let's go to, let's see, let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Because again, Jesus was the first fruit, and that is, that word first is indicative of more to come. This is 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and the 20th verse, and it reads, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. See, he is the first fruits of those that have died to be risen from the dead. Verse 21 says, For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. All right? So by man came death. This is what he told Adam, from dust thou art, and to dust shalt thou return. Why? Because he ate of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He corresponded with Satan. He got that fruit, the fruit of lies, from his wife Eve, who was deceived. He was not deceived, but nevertheless, he listened. He ate of that fruit instead of rejecting her like Job did, who told his wife when she told, when she told him to curse God and die in, in his destitute state. He told her, you speak as one of the foolish women. This is what Adam brought on all of us. And even until this day, we die, we go out to the graveyard, worms eat our carcass, and we turn back to dust. So he said, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. He says, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. See, that was that man. Who was God manifest in the flesh. In the beginning, he was the Word. And that Word was God. He was with God, the Father, and he was God. And he was manifest in the flesh. You can read that in John, the first chapter. In verse 23, it reads, But every man in his own order. See, there is an order to this thing. There is an order to this resurrection. It says, 